Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Kelly Harris, so great to have you on the XY Podcast. How are you doing? Good, thank you, Emily, and thanks for having me. I'm super excited. How excited are you that uh, the NRL season's just kicked off? I know you are a NRL supporter. I am. Fan. I am, and the Cowboys went down. So a um, little bit disappointed, but it was a good game in their first stadium. So that was pretty um, pretty special for Greeny and um, Thurston because that was one of Thurston's promises. I remember when they won the grand final was um, he wanted a new stadium for the club. So that was a special night for them guys. And how I'm just so glad, I mean, you're speaking to a born and bred Townsville person here, so I'm fully <laughs> on the same page when it comes to the Cowboys. Um, I'm just really glad that they were able to actually have an audience for their first game in the stadium in mm. light of everything going on in the world. I couldn't believe it. I thought there is no way after all this time of the talk and the process of finally getting this stadium, I was like, they just cannot have an empty crowd. Like it just... There's, there, there's something wrong there if that happens. So I'm, I'm really glad they had an audience. Yeah, I think the universe definitely had their back that night because um, like we all know now, everything's um, cancelled. Um, was it 500 people over? Over 500 people or something like that. So Yeah, yeah. So, so ScoMo is saying if it's a non-essential event of over 500 people, for it to be cancelled. So watch this oh, wow. space. I mean, there's quite a few things going on. My, mm. my um, friends of mine are supposed to go to Blues Fest shortly, so I don't even know. But I spoke to them and they said, no, 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 Blues Fest is an essential event. Like it's, it's essential. <laughs> it has to happen. And I was like, yep, no, I get that. That makes sense. Uh, <laughs> and so, who knows? Yeah, who knows um, where we're headed? Yeah, that's exactly right. Ooh. Totally, totally. Now, we connected recently and this is going to stick in my mind for a while because I love this story. Mm. So we connected when you first joined the XY platform, I believe, and you followed up that sign up process with a little email to myself. <laughs> and it was the chirpiest and most energetic email I've received in quite a while. Oh, thank it's actually you. the kind of email. It's actually the kind of email that I would send myself, which is why I think it resonated so much. <laughs> <laughs> but what piqued my interest the most was at the bottom of your email, underneath your uh, warm regards, Kelly Harris, was your title and your email signature, which read Director of Human Connections. And I saw that and I absolutely loved it. And the first thing I had to do was shoot you a reply email and say, hey, great to have you on the platform. You have got to tell me what is director of human connections because when I read that it instantly resonated with me because I feel like that's exactly what I do with XY. I am this facilitator of human connections, uh, humanizing the digital experience that we have on the platform. And it's a crazy awesome thing to be a part of and to, to, to do. And when I saw your email, it just, yeah, it, it, I just, I had to know. So, um, <laughs> And I'm not going to read your reply email to me there. I would yeah. much rather hear it come from you. So my first question is, um, please explain to me what does it mean to be director of human connections? And I guess furthermore from that, we'd love to hear a bit more of how you came to own that role within your business. Okay. Oh, well, thank you for all those kind words. <laughs> Um, and likewise, it was lovely to meet you. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I have found a twin in this industry. It was just amazing. So, um, it was, it was great. Um, director of human, um, connections is, is a role that I made up because when I first come into the industry, um, I've never been into, uh, financial advising or actually into the finance industry. And I saw a massive gap between clients and advisors, I didn't get the disconnection. I, I was trying to work around it in my head and I just, I just couldn't understand it. So <laughs> it was funny. We had this amazing coach called Michael Back and he is from human to human. 
And um, we went through my role in the business this one day and he said, Kel, what do you do? And I said, I talk to people. He goes, is there anything else that you do in this business? And I said, no. All I do every day, day in and day out, is talk to our clients. And he's like, holy moly, you've actually got a specific role in your business that all you do is talk to clients. And I said, yes. And he goes, wow. Then I went, you know what? I am the director of human connections. So that's how it started. <laughs> that's how it started because I have no other role in this business except for connecting with our clients on a daily basis or on a weekly, a weekly basis, monthly basis. That's all I do is my role is to pick up the phone or go and see people in, in face to face. That's all I do. We have conversations and it's all about connecting and understanding where our clients are. So that's how I got the director of human connections and um, because that's my role. I don't do anything else in the business except for connect with our clients and um, walk with them with the journey that they're on. Mm. I love that. And we will 100% explore this in, in far more detail yeah. uh, in a second. Um, but so, okay, so just let's backtrack a little bit. What, how did you step into this um, role within Parent? So uh, uh, Kai set up the business. So what were you doing prior to financial services and how, what was the conversation like where it became the piece where it was like, okay, I'm going to step in and I'm going to own director of human connections. Like I'm just trying to piece it all together yeah. for, for everyone. Yeah, totally understand. So before I was working with Perrin Financial Group, I was working with a government agency that was putting um, unemployed people into employment. So I was working with the community, um, as you can imagine, um, lining up on a, a dull line or lining up at any employment agencies actually can be quite quite um, tricky for some people. So what I did is engaged with the community and all the organisations um, aligned with the government to help put them into, help people put them into employment. So um, my world before PFG, Parent Financial Group, was connecting um, on a daily basis with everybody in the community. Um, whether you were unemployed for a long period of time or whether you were um, in a high high position professional job and you made, were made redundant, I actually connected with you to try and find some more sustainable employment for yourself. It was um, then when I walked from that role into Parent Financial Group, Kai said, come on, Kel, we need you on board. You're amazing at what you do. And um, I want you to put this into our business. And um, I initially went, Oh, I'm pretty crap with money. Like, holy moly, what am, how am I going to work in a financial planning business when I'm not so great with money myself because I'm all about authenticity, being authentic. So I'm like, oh. So I sort of took a while to find my feet within the business because I, I, I wanted to be true to myself. I wanted to make sure that I was doing something that, um, you know, aligned with my beliefs and, and the values and all that sort of stuff. And and money wasn't one of them at that time. Definitely wasn't. I was Kai's worst client. So <laughs> after doing some um, soul searching and, and trying to find where I stood in this business and it ended up being I, I'm connect, I connect with people. That was my job. It's always been my job. Um, before I worked within a government, the government agency getting people into employment, I was actually a nurse and in social services. So um, it's, I've always had that background of helping people and understanding people and um, just listening to people because I believe that we can all learn from everybody and I believe just because you're in one position now doesn't mean that you're going to be in it forever. So I just love hearing stories about people. So we made this roll up in Parent Financial Group where I could still connect with people and then really find my groove in the business. And the business model has thrived on it. Um, we're just very lucky that our business model can allow such a role um, just to contact our clients. That's the only role I do is contact clients. I can contact up to 30 to 40 clients a week and have mm -hmm conversations whether those conversations are for an hour or whether they're for 10 minutes it doesn't matter because that's my role in the business connecting talking understanding listening um having empathy it's all those all those qualities that i have that are naturally and built in me so it was a it was a good thing that i've come over and i've had those because in a world of in the industry today i think it's really good that um you have somebody in your business that can do that 
Yeah, so yeah, it's and fun. It's fun. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. And I guess, you know, we, we, we were chatting um, before we went, went live with this, but, yeah. um, you know, being able to bring in that different lens mm. into the advice space. So I find it really interesting that you've uh, brought this n- sort of non-advisor wearing hat and you've been able to give it a really different perspective, yeah. um, I suppose. And so, I mean, there's so much that I'm, I, I would uh, love to sort of cover, but I guess if I'm just conscious of work, working through the journey or starting from the beginning. So um, actually one question I did have mm. was, so do you, in, in the process, do you, is uh, new clients that come in um, for that sort of first initial appointment or, or whenever that um, step in the process is, uh, is it part of the process for you to meet them as well? Oh, I, I feel like that would be a given. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So um, when they come in to the, the office, um, they meet Kai and then they meet all our team. They actually meet all our team because I think it's really, really important to know that it's not just Kai, we've got a team to support them. So, you know, some people go, oh, if Kai's on holidays, if Kai's sick, or what happens to Kai, what happens to parent financial group? So we, we built that depth of people that have the same qualities of us and so mm-hmm. everyone everyone meets our clients. So we all meet them and, um, yeah, so the clients understand if Jade picks up the phone or El- Emily picks up the phone, they, they know what Emily looks like. They know what Jade looks like. They know a little bit about Jade. They know a little bit about Emily. So it, it's it's a great um, engagement for client and staff member. Mm. So there's four in the team, in yes. the parent team? Yes. Four? Yes. And Kai's the only um, advisor. advisor? So yeah. 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 And yeah. I suppose Emily coming from a, an industry that wasn't um, financial planning too, it was – the lens, like you said, was very different for me because I've actually, obviously, you know, Kai and I have been with each other and married for 20 years. However, we never really sat down and I never really understood his career and he didn't understand my career. So when I first started with Parent Financial Group, I'm like, wow, do clients understand this um, documents and all this sort of stuff? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't. Because I'm married to a financial partner for 20 years and I have no idea what these documents meant. So it was really good for, for myself to come into the business and um, humanise some of these documents that we were giving to clients too because a lot of them, they, you know, they say they understand them, but did they really understand them? So we went right through our advice process too when I first started and we changed all our documents to, for, the, for the client to understand better. Mm. So as a non-advisor who's <laughs> stepped in to look at this process, yeah. what was uh, looking at the, the I, I suppose I'm going to say the traditional kind of advice process, what was one or some of the biggest um, shocks or realisations? Like when we spoke um, the other day, you mentioned the single annual review. Yeah. So I, I couldn't get my head around that. I um, I was actually a bit a bit stunned about the whole process actually to tell you the truth when I first started because I'm like people come to you for help how can you then turn around and go this is your annual agreement and I'm only going to contact you once a year or twice a year or quarterly or however it works I just didn't get it I just thought if I was going to lose weight and I actually put my hand up to tell somebody that I want to lose weight and then they're going to go right that's okay, Kel, let us have your money, but we're only going to contact you once a year. Well, what do you think my weight's going to be like? I've actually been vulnerable enough. I've asked for help. I've asked for professional, you know, professional help. What's once a year going to do? So I couldn't get my head around this whole only contacting once or twice or or three times a year. Like I'm thinking, I know the advisor because I know how hard Kai works. I knew there was a lot of background work going beyond the scenes and happening and all the processes. And I I understood all that, but I didn't understand how does that client know? How does that client know what we're doing? How does that get, you know, how does it, how does that get transparent or transpired to the client to them to understand what we are doing? And it didn't. We just thought the clients know. Well, the clients didn't know. So that's when we decided that we would start the mentoring program, which is that contact. Mm. Great. And I'm so, so glad you brought that up because that's Mm. exactly where I wanted to um, 
head in this conversation. So the mentoring program, you mentioned it to me the other day. Um, like did this, did this start when the business started or did this evolve over time? Mm. Yeah, no, it started straight away. As soon as I started in the business, it started straight away because the disconnect was um, after, you know, Kai had worked for other financial planning firms and he was bringing over the the same but different business model. He wanted to implement a lot differently, but Mm -hmm. still it was the same, if that made sense. That that contact only once, twice, three or four times a year, that was the, what was the ongoing service agreement. So as soon as I... Start for, sorry to interrupt. Did yeah, you right. just a quick question that came to mind then? Did you guys start with a clean sort of slate, or did Kai bring some uh, clients over from a previous role? What did that yep. look like? Yep. So when we started Parent Financial Group, Kai brought over his old clients from the old firm, mm-hmm. and um, so this was all fresh though for these new clients that were coming over too, because the business model that Kai was under didn't have this program. Um, mm-hmm. So our the clients that were brought over were actually um, they were amazed they um, they were just loved it they and they still love it to this day. Mm. Well, now I'm mm. going to assume that there's probably not a lot of advice businesses, although maybe in their their own form or their own style. But I I would uh, assume that there's a lot that don't have a this specific mentoring program. So. Um, let's walk me through it a little bit. What does it look like? Um, like, give me the rundown. How do you implement it? What's happening? Um, and then we can get into some yeah. other questions after. So the mentoring program um, was based on the disconnection that I saw when I first walked into this industry. Um, the, it was based on these ongoing service agreements that only was only making contact with the client when the ongoing service agreement said so quarterly, annually, whatever. Um, So I, like I said, I was a little bit shocked that that was happening and I didn't understand, it didn't understand how business could work without any human contact. I actually didn't get it. Um, So I, after quite so many sleepless nights and racking my brain, what could I do to improve our business and what could I do to put the client first and the business second, I come up with a mentoring program. The mentoring program, I pretty much brought forward from all the other businesses that I've run as a business development manager. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, you can actually implement a, a mentoring program into yours. Um, what, what it is, is when the client signs up with us, we actually ask them, would you like to be on the mentoring program? It's part of your ongoing service agreement. This cost to this mentoring program costs nothing because Kai and I are big believers that my role as a human the director of human connections should be no value. It should be in, should be in the ongoing service agreement. That's part of communicating. It's part of engaging. So the mentoring program is, is part included into the ongoing service agreement. Clients get asked, do they want to be contacted weekly, fortnightly or monthly or quarterly, six monthly or, you know, 12 monthly annually. Um, most clients drum roll, most clients said they wanted to be contacted monthly. So this was a big turning point in our business when I went, wow, our clients know what the ongoing service agreement is. However, they wanted more contact. They wanted a once a month phone call. So that's when I went, that's all I'm going to do in this business. I'm going to connect with people. I'm going to engage with them. I'm going to walk this journey with them every month. And this puts me in front of the game too financially because when I make these phone calls, people are, oh, Joey needs braces this month. We're going on a holiday this month. The car's broken down. We've replaced it this month. Oh, Joey's starting private education in grade seven now, not grade eight. All these conversations that I'm having are benefiting the client and it's a moving wheel their financial plan because things change. I didn't understand. That was one thing that I didn't understand that a client would get a financial plan done and then five years' time, the advisors haven't changed this financial plan. However, there's so many moving wheels. There's been so many things happen. People have died. They've got an inheritance. Um, they've had more children. They've gone from public school to private school. All life, life is happening. But this plan wasn't changing. So doing the monthly mentoring program, the plan's changing constantly. The plan's a moving wheel. So we're working with them and... Um, so they can get the outcome that they want when they first walked into our door. 
And so that's our mentoring program. And it's, um, it's an amazing program. Um, like I said, it, it allows me to have my job as the director of human connections and I can just talk and talk and talk and understand our clients. So from, you know, children's birthdays to their birthdays to um, people being made redundant to people getting pay rises, you're in the game, you're on it every month and they look forward to that phone call. Mm. That's awesome. Mm. I love that. Mm. Um, so in terms of charging for it, it's just tied up in the... It's, yep. Yep. We, we, we went through this and we went, you know, obviously that's my role. How are we, how are we going to put that into the business model? Like obviously I'm spending 40 hours, 40 hours plus a week on this. And then we both looked at each other and we went, no, it's actually part of our job. It's actually part mm-hmm. of our business. And we don't have to, we're not going to have to offset that to our clients and charge our clients for that. This is how we want to run our business model. This is how we want to connect with our clients. So we just add it into the ongoing service agreement. And I'm not saying when we add, we're not putting thousands of dollars onto it at all. It just is part of our service and we don't charge. And I would say then, um, I mean, just from sort of hearing, hearing what you're saying now is that I feel like that you'd almost be creating some, some efficiencies in there anyway, because these conversations you're having with people, uh, I feel like a lot of the times they aren't directly like strictly financially related. Um, you know, oh. there's, there's, it's all the life, like you said, life happens, yep. you know, little Jimmy needs braces or this or private school, or we want to go on a holiday. That's a qualitative thing with an underlying financial Absolutely. Um, attachment. So I imagine that I guess you would be able to uh, diffuse or answer a, a lot of their questions before they even need to speak to Kai? Oh, absolutely. It's, um, so when I, when I ring them and we talk and we discuss things and stuff like that, and I go, one of my main things I say, is this worrying you? Is this worrying you? Is this keeping you up at night? And if they say yes, I say, let's book in a meeting with Kai. And this is above the ongoing service agreement. So our clients have this ongoing service agreement, but they have connection with us at any time above. You know, I don't say, you know, usually it's a phone call with Kai. It's like, let's let's marinate over it and let's get, let's recircle back to this problem. We don't want you to have sleepless nights. We don't want you sitting on the lounge worrying. This is what you're paying us for. Let's book a meeting with Kai on the phone. It might take 10 minutes. It might take an hour. But you know what? This is the promise that we gave you when you first signed up for us that we would be here for you. And we, it can't be all scripted. It can't be just, oh, sorry, we are only going to speak to you once a year or, or, you know, twice a year. It doesn't work like that. That's not life. Life life is just rolls around. Things happen, you know, as they say, shit happens. So that's the way, you know, we, we're here for our clients and that's why the mentoring programs work so successfully and we've never, um, our clients never left us um, and we just have building our, our business on referral base. So, yeah, I just, yeah, um, just touching on that, I had a few quick questions too. So I just want to, I would just want to get, because I know we've sort of chatted about this a little bit um, when we originally connected, but I really want to bring all the listeners on the journey Mm. so they can um, (laughs) hear all the good stuff that I got to hear. So you guys, so Kai brought over some clients from the old role when you started the business. You've now got how many clients? 160. 160. Mm. And you have lost how many, did you say? I think no. probably, I reckon, uh, you know what, if, if it was any, it would be um, insurance-based clients that have decided to to go elsewhere. They're not been financial planning clients, so I would say probably five. <laughs> and, you've spent, and you've spent how much on traditional marketing advertising? None so far. <laughs> Nothing. So Nothing. We're just starting. Uh, we're just actually um, doing a new website now. So we had the same website for five years. Um, we've done no marketing at all, no Facebook. Well, we tried Facebook, but um, it was just we worked out that human connection, getting in front of people, talking to people, understanding people. It was our model and it worked. Wow. And so how many of your conversations um how many, you know, I guess the ratio of conversations that you have with people where they actually don't need to speak to Kai, but you've been able to um, give them that validation or just an ear to listen or yeah. for, for someone to lean into, like talk, just talk me through some of the conversations. Uh, it's, um, what, 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 what kind of, yeah, what are you talking <laughs> to them about? It's actually um, amazing because, you know, we've got um, the younger 
generation and then we've got the older generation. So um, the younger generation where, you know, often we I give them a call, say our name's Jodie. Hi, Jodie, it's Kelly from Parent Financial Group. They will often say hello, Kelly, first though because they've now put me into their mobile phones. So they're onto it. They're, hey, Kel, how are you going? Good. I'm like, what's happening this month? What's happening for the month of March? Ah, oh, you know what? We were only talking about that last night. Um, we've got Joey's going to Armadale maybe for a union comp. You know, it's going to, going to cost us about $800. Um, we've got Barry's 50th happening. You know, like we've got things happening around the family things. Okay, well, then we sort of take a breath, have a bit of a chat about that, and we're like, well, where does this sit for you guys? Where does it sit for you financially? You know, are you robbing Peter to pay Paul or how's this going to work for you guys? And that's when we go over it. How is it going to work? What can we do? What can I do to help them in cash flow? And I find talking through it with people, they understand it and they get it. And they actually find out their own, they actually answer themselves, their question. Do you know what I mean? So by just talking, we go through it and it, and it just happens. But the best thing about ringing people and contacting people is that they know we're here, that they know I'm listening, I'm understanding. I have children. I have three children of my own. Um, you know, my oldest is 25. My youngest is 12. Being there, done that. I've been separated before and divorced before. So I understand all these conversations. So when they're talking to me, I say, I get it. I understand it. I, I, I know how you're feeling. I'm sorry. How can, we, how can we fix it? What can we do? So we, we, we talk everything from money to health to housing to, to, to family units, how they're supposed to be working, if they are working, if they're not working, and try, and try and just, you know, be a mentor for these people that sometimes they don't want to put their hands up and ask friends, other family members. Um, sometimes husband and wife don't want to talk to each other about money issues. So when I speak to them, um, they might turn around and say, can you ring Paul? Can you ring Paul and have this conversation, Kelly, with him? Because we're not on the same page at the moment with money. I'm not understanding it. He's understanding it. Can we just marinate and talk over this? Totally. So I'll ring Paul up. Paul, you know what? I just had a conversation with say, wife, Joey. What's happening? You want to buy the new car? She doesn't. Like, let's, can we meet in the middle? What are we going to do? So it's, that's my role is to connect. And it's the, <laughs> amazing some of the conversations I do have, like, you know, Seriously, we have plenty of laughs. We, um, we, 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 we cry together, we laugh together, um, but we all know the end goal. We all know the end goal and the money and the conversations are usually around money because money is the driver to all these things that they're either arguing about or whether they're having sleepless nights about. It's all got to do with money. I don't give advice and I don't step over that line. My role as a mentor is to listen and to engage with the client and to understand them. If I think it is a financial matter that has to be worked over, that's when I will, will book in a meeting with Kai and um, he will call the client. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that. plenty of different conversations. I can't even, like, you know, I can't even remember the conversations. I have so many of them. But what I do understand is they love the call. They love hearing from me and I love hearing from them. I love the conversation. I love what I get out of the conversation as much as the client gets out of the conversation because I'm, I'm in front of them all the time, you know, and that's how we run the business. It's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, I just feel honored to do the role. And I, I like, it's just connecting with people is, is, is a really cool thing to have in your business and to be allowed to do it. You know what? And I can resonate with you 100% because that is exactly what I do in XY. Like I spend 20. my days having <laughs> exactly, and yeah. I, I have conversations all the time. Like, mm. and when I really try to think about what, what it is that I do I at the very core, when we've had this conversation, yeah. it's about connecting. Like yeah. the, to me, it's like the, 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 the advisor community, everyone on the platform, um, for them, it's, a, it's around collaboration yeah. and working Together and sharing ideas and experiences and then uh, and as well as that but also me and and sort of what I bring into the fold is is just connecting and yeah. I will have conversations with someone or I'll, someone will reach out to me give me a phone call and and you know that they'll they'll have a query or they're a bit worried about something or a question and straight away I can already recall I'm like oh, two three four people I need to introduce you to them like absolutely they can help about with this and yes. and literally that's what I do I connect people I'll do 
can't even tell you how many email intros I've done in my time or just passing on a phone number or sharing a piece of content or something that I know will help them out. Yes. Um, and it's just, it is super powerful stuff. It like it's, it's, you know, the, yeah, it's the power of if human connection and conversation. Yes. And I think the other thing, um, uh, you know, more so uh, that that's super valuable is the validation piece. And I feel like this would come mm-hmm. through in the conversations that you have uh, with your clients yeah. as well, but just knowing that they're not on the journey alone. Um, yep. And sh- I mean, for me personally, I share examples. So especially in this kind of environment that, the industry is in at the moment, mm-hmm. I, I realize how easy it is for advisors to sort of feel like they're in a bit of a bubble where it's really hard to block out all the negative noise. So when I can share really positive stories um, or things that other advisors are doing, how optimistic so many are, um, and I can really lift them up that way, that's that's the goal. That's the uh, dream. Like yeah. that's a good outcome. So I feel like that would be the same for you guys. And totally clients, right. You totally rock, Em. <laughs> I just... <laughs> um, I, like, like I said, when we first met, I was just like, holy moly, there is somebody out there like me in this industry. And you know what? There are plenty, there is probably a lot more people. I don't know them, but um, I met you and that was my first thought that this is a, a young lady that knows that connection works, you know, and you are a younger lady that could go into that technology and, and all that sort of stuff. But it, it's ju- it was just so refreshing to see that someone values conversations, someone values picking up the phone or face-to-face conversations with people and understanding them. And that's what our clients want. When they ring you or when they come into your office, Or that's all they want. They want to know that someone understands them. Someone has their back. Someone's going to be there the whole journey, not collect your money, in January and then see you in December. It can't work like that. The industry needs to change. Human connection needs to evolve. Conversations need to be had. And there has to be a role in everyone's business that can do this. We have to make it happen. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm imagining a bunch of advisors listening to this right now going, You're an idiot, that's Kelly. awesome. Oh. No, 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 no. No, they're sitting there thinking themselves, that's great, but I do not have the capability or the resources to hire, have our, my own, uh, you know, director of human connections in my business. So mm-hmm. I would love to get any of your thoughts or insights for the advice practices who have got their team um, and they've got their roles. They can't bring a specific uh, director of human connections in, but I, I really believe there is still a, a way that they can implement this kind of program or strategy or tips so ah, absolutely what sort of, where, where in, for, in in your opinion or your insights where could they start what could they think about uh how could they start to implement this kind of um strategy into their own business okay so um obviously i align myself with some financial planning businesses in brisbane and sunshine coast and my title has come up with them too and me mm-hmm. me has said do you know what let me come down to your business for a day and they're like, really, Kel? Really? Like, yes. Like, I love it so much. And I, you know what? There's so many clients to go around. You don't have to be selfish in this world. Let's help each other out. So yeah. I've gone into those businesses and um, they've got the right people on the right seats, but they don't understand how to communicate and interact with the client only on this um, you know, emailing the younger girl, the emailing and just processes. They're so process and procedure driven that they don't know how to communicate. So but as they should be, as they should be, because mm. the advisor, I mean, in saying that an advisor wears a lot of hats, don't get That's me wrong, exactly right. behavioral finance and, you know, they're yeah. a psychologist half the time, but they're, they're great with the, the, the numbers, the strategy, mm. the formulas, like that's, that's the skill set. That's, yeah. you know, that's where they shine. So I can, I can understand um, that it would be, uh, you know, sometimes you forget or, or you find it a little difficult to, to take that lens off yes. and to look at it through a different window. So yeah, yeah I a hundred percent agree. So uh, what I would recommend and what I've done with these businesses that I have gone into is let's do some role playing. Let's get people out of their shells because they've got it in them. They, they interact with their friends outside of work. They interact with family members. Like they, they communicate. They, 
everyone communicates, but it was just showing them how. And I'm sure that in their 40 hours of work, if you can get two of your, you know, two or three of your staff members to contact one person a week, I would, I would put it out there, only one client a week, get them out of their role a little bit, get them understanding the client because they probably do understand the client on a, in a document. They know who Sue and Barry are on a document, but do they know who, how Sue and Barry sounds? Do they have, they have had a conversation with Sue and Barry? Let them pick up the phone and go, hi, Sue, this is Kelly from, I don't know, Parent Financial Group. I've been looking over your documents for quite some time and working with Jeff, your advisor. I just wanted to introduce myself. Break the cycle. Break the cycle and start letting your other staff members engage with your clients. Don't keep them hidden because there's so many hidden staff members that aren't using their full potential of connecting with your clients. Um, Another thing would be is, you know, like when clients email you, sometimes your staff members would be emailing them back, get them to ring them. Okay. Hi, Kelly. I've just received your phone call. It's Josie from Parent Financial Group. I just thought I'd give you a quick call to answer your email. Starts connection straight away, doesn't it? It's it's not asking for permission. It's just picking up the phone, engaging. So that's what we do. And that's what I implemented in some of these practices. And it's built so much confidence in this the men and men and women in the practices the advisors they're like wow we get a lot out of talking to our clients not just the clients getting a lot talking from us do you know what i mean so it works both ways and then all of a sudden you've got this culture of of human contact they don't want to email anymore they want to pick up the phone and talk to this person because you know last time they spoke to them it was their birthday and they'd organized this party well they want to know what it, how it went See how it rolls? Interaction, yes. engagement, It's and it goes right through your office. So you don't have to have a role that's just Kelly for 40 hours. You have staff members there that can do it. Time poor, make it a priority. One phone call a week. Start implementing it. You will see the change. I can honestly tell you that you will see the change in your clients. And you're, you know, and even with, with your clients, when when they talk about money, you're in their, in their mind all the time. You're, you're contacting them every time. Oh, Kelly from financial, Parent Financial Group, call her. See how they say call her? They don't mm-hmm. say email her or go to their website, call her because they're engaging with me every month. They know that I can pick up the phone at any time. They know that I'll call someone back. So it's just just that transaction that can work. It's... um. So like I said, the businesses that I have gone into, we've done a lot of role playing because um, a lot of offices now are open space. So mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of people don't like talking in front of people either. They get embarrassed. So we break down that embarrassment too. So we do a lot of role plays with each other. Um, I contact them on the phone. They ring me. I pretend I'm a client. And it's just keep doing it and keep doing it. You know, it, it, it becomes fun. It becomes easy. And the business will benefit from it it just is about picking up the phone and i know technology we we tend to go to all the time but i can't i can't express how much picking up the phone and listening to your clients what it means to them and it means the world to them that you care you love them you've got their back you're not taking their money for nothing you are working constantly with them and you're understanding what they're going through so Absolutely. And you can even use tech to your advantage. Mm -hmm. So it's no secret that I am a huge fan of Loom. I love Loom videos. Um, I don't even know what that is. You don't know what Loom? Yeah, see, I'm not in. Oh, my God. Oh my God, I'm about to rock your world. Oh so God. you're going to have to talk to Becky about this. Okay. Becky is also a big fan. Yeah. They're uh, little videos that you can record on your computer. So mm-hmm. you can record either just your screen. So perhaps you want to, um, you know, uh, uh, internally with XY, if I want to uh, give Gwen a, a task or a new job, I can record my screen and just say, hey, here's how to do this. Can you please go and do this for me? So instead of trying to relay the instructions to her, I can just record my screen. It's nice, quick, simple. Instead of me sitting there trying to type a ginormous email, Mm. um, I can record just the camera. So like I'm chatting to you through the laptop at the moment. Yeah. So I can record myself. So I can give you a practical example. So we kicked off our XY Plus co-op membership to – last year, sorry, mid to late last year. Um, 
and we, when, when it all sort of came about, advisors were sort of reaching out, asking how they could better support the community. Um, and, and so the XY plus co-op kind of sort of sprung from there. So, um, we had a lot of people give verbal interest to say that, Hey, yes, I would love to join, uh, when it's all up and running. And then once we did have the, the page ready to go to actually accept, uh, signups and, and payments, I had this list of, um, people who, had said they wanted to join. So whenever someone joined, they received an email from me with a Loom video, a mm-hmm. personalized Loom video. So if it was you who joined, oh, you'd get an so email. Cool. Hey Kelly, um, stoked to have you on board as XY Plus founding member number 27. Yeah. Um, I recorded this quick Loom video and I sent this to every anyone who joined got this sort of different yeah. version of it mail with a loom video and it was a 30 second loom video from me that said hey kelly stoked to have you on board number 27 and it was just a quick little introduction so you could click on that link boom video appears and it gives a whole new dimension does it's connection to email yes through technology yes it's a one way through tech but it is so powerful and the amount of responses that i got from people even to this day whenever i send a loom video The amount of people who reply and say, oh my God, like I couldn't wipe the smile off my face when I got your video. Thank you so much. Or wow, that, that just made my day. Like I was, I honestly didn't expect to receive that. It's, it's powerful. It's really powerful stuff. Mm. Oh, I'm going to do that. M. Oh, yes. And I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that we pop for anyone who hasn't used loom before. Um, I'll, I'll be sure to pop a link into the show notes, um, and any other sort of, uh, uh, tips and, and programs or things like that. So yeah, Loom Fantastic. is fantastic. Bonjoro is another one as well. Um, credit to the uh, uh, Aussie boys who set that one up. Um, it's just it just gives a whole other dimension to personalizing the experience. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's a game changer. It make, and it makes sense because, like I was saying, you know, I'm contacting people, but however I can get in front of people by that program, I think, that, and then they can listen to it whenever, then they can ring me back. Or they can, I don't know. There's there's yep. a big world for this. I think definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm gonna definitely um, dive into that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you the link. It's awesome, yeah. and, and that's what I mean. So you're still, um, you know, uh, lever- like u- using the power of technology, yeah. but still able to do it in a personalized, humanized mm-hmm. way. Um, mm-hmm. So I would throw the challenge out there to uh, anyone any advisors or teams uh, listening to this to, you know, the next communication you have with a client, maybe try and send them a Loom video. If, they're, if you're onboarding a new person, um, if they don't get a chance to meet the whole team in person or if it's a virtual meeting, uh, whoever sends the follow-up correspondence or comms, whether that's the advisor or maybe it's the support staff, um, I, I, w- I would challenge. I'd throw it out there. Give it a crack. Send a Loom video and just see what response you get because, mm-hmm. Like I've not had a single person reply and say, uh, can you stop sending me videos? Not one. Um, (laughs) Or maybe they just don't reply. I don't know. But the amount of responses that I've had of people just blown away um, because it's showing them that, hey, I see you and I value you. You're you're not just a number in this chain of, of clients or, or, or people on the platform, you are a person um, and we see you and we want to show up for you. So it's, it's yeah, I, I would throw that out to anyone who wants to give that a, a, a try. And circle back, let Kelly and I know how it went. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd love to hear. And I had no idea that you went and visited um, advice businesses mm. to, to help them implement yeah. this. That's amazing. Yes. And I, I just, because I absolutely love this industry now, like I said, at first I was like, eh, I don't know whether I can be in this world. However, I have dived into it. I have loved everyone that I've met. And I love now that people are, they are moving with change. They're getting it. They understand it. And you know what? And like I said, there's so many of us out there where we can all help each other. We don't have to keep these little secrets to ourselves. We can all help each other. We can all go in and go, you know what? This is working for me. Do you want to try it? Or, hey, this is not working for me. Do you have another idea? Like it, like this loom doom thing that you just mentioned, like I'm just like, whoa, yes, let's get onto this. Like I have never heard of it. So the power of conversations is just amazing. And us as humans, we're wired for connection. And I think with this whole overhaul with financial planning, this has been a massive thing that's come out of it, human connection, people people not being heard and seen. 
and it's a huge thing to now go, well, well let's flip it and let's do it. Let's get this ramped up, which I absolutely love. And I don't even think it's a case of, um, of clients not being seen from advisors. They just haven't, um, uh, how am I going to uh, phrase this? It's like, like you said that, like you said mm. earlier, they're, they're doing a lot of work in the background. That's right. Absolutely. They know that they're working their tails off for yes. their client, but they just forget to tell exactly. the clients that they're doing that. Exactly. Yes, yes exactly. absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I was saying, you know, and I'm for one, my, my husband, he, he works day in and day out. So I get that world of a financial advisor and the hard work that all these financial advisors and all these business owners and practices are putting in. And it's hard and it's really, really hard. And if you can get to that human connection, it is it, it will absolutely help anyone. I guarantee you just picking up the phone, getting in front of people, um, like you said, this loom, anything that will help this the clients feel listened to, needed and wanted in your business can, can only help these advisors moving forward too. Absolutely. Mm. So what is on the horizon for Perrin Financial Group in 2020? Oh. What's, what's in the works? What's happening? Lots of talking. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of conversations, um, obviously. Um, we've just got a new website we're about to launch. Um, an amazing man called Patrick Flynn is helping with us. That He's been incredible. And uh, he, he, um, he is... Such a legend. And the communication has just been unbelievable. Patrick Patrick has that down pat. So as a customer, um, with a, with uh, we just can't speak of him highly. So anyone out there needs a website, Patrick Flynn's a guy to go to. Um, <laughs> so with us, it's 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 implementing this business model even better for our clients, um, interacting more, finding new ways of engaging. Um, it's it's getting our name out there. We've been um, just been hiding here at the Sunshine Coast in an office, and um, I, like we're, the the wheels have been turning for five years now. So we're like, let's get out there. Let's let's spread the word. Let's help as many people as we can, and um, and let's let's connect to as many people and help them with their money in, in finances. So business as usual, but we're just ramping up, getting getting us out, out there, spreading the word, and um, yeah, just just doing what we love. I love it. Well, I'm very, very keen to follow the journey. Um, I'll be checking in to see how you guys are going with everything. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Is Thanks, there um, how, for anyone who wants to get in touch, wants to reach out, wants to have a conversation and connect, uh, how can they do that with you? What's the best way to do uh, that? I would love that. Anybody out there, I look, I could rave on about this topic for a long time. Um, I, I love talking. That's what I do as a job. I connect. So please um, call me. Um, well, probably actually email me first on Kelly, K E L L Y, the symbol at Perrin, P E R R O N, F for financial, G for group.com. Um, or please go to our website, www.perrinfg.com, and that will have our office number there. So, um, or find me on LinkedIn. I'm off, often raving on there or talking on there about something. Um, so please reach out, lean in, and um, if I can help any practices out there, I, I'm happy to have conversations. I love it. I love it. And I know you're uh, active. You jump in on the XY platform on the yes. regular as well. So yes. uh, perhaps we need a, a new topic. I don't know. Um, I mean, well, we've got, oh, well, we've got marketing there, but maybe there's, maybe there's room for a, a conversations or a <laughs> Emily uh, and Kelly go rogue <laughs> with human connection. <laughs> Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe there's a human connection topic in there. Yeah. Don't get me started. Like that's when, hilarious. You know, when you start talking about something you're super passionate about, you can go on a tangent. So um, yes. don't put it past me. Maybe something like that will pop up. But yeah, I mean, anyone who's got any questions or wants to dive in, they can look you up on XY. Um, I, I feel like there's a couple of great questions or discussions that can come off the back of this for sure. So uh, let's keep the conversation rolling. Hey, thanks. And um, thanks for your time today. And thank you for everybody listening. And um yeah, let's um let's connect. Love it. All right. Talk soon. Bye.